Hello, this is Dr. Lorenzo, Longevity Health Institute. I hope you're well. Uh, good evening, actually here on this beautiful uh, fall evening here in October uh, 2018. Um, here in my office in Rochester, Michigan. And I uh, wanted to go over a couple uh, simple uh, but very um, common, but let's say uncommon, <laughs> Um, things that we come across here, meaning they're a little bit esoteric, they're out there, uh, but things that we look for because we're always looking for um, the details, looking at root issues and things things that might be overlooked at times um, in your internist or in your primary care um, generalized approach office. Um, so a couple things is this, uh, you know, here we're always uh, approaching you very personalized and in a functional medical approach. And when we're talking specifically about your hormones in your endocrine system, um, we always think of one main gland, and always at least consider this, is your pituitary. Um, your pituitary is a gland that's kind of like the mother gland of all the endocrine hormones. It's a big signaler um, in your brain um, to your thyroid and your adrenals, and then ultimately your ovaries and testes, and has many influences on your body. Um, but what's often overlooked or underappreciated is is that unless there's some overt pituitary sign or symptom, sometimes headaches, visual disturbances, um, uh, endocrine or hormone features that are very overt, very obvious, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it, then they, then they uh, come off as um, dismissed or they're overlooked. Um, the thing is, is that um, there's some underlining signs and symptoms that we always, um, or history I should say, that we always um, get from a patient and want to make sure that we appreciate this. So one is, is that anything that's related to a head injury um, or a concussion or a close head injury, head trauma, head neck trauma, which we see often um, in patients that have come here because of other reasons, but that's part of their history, um, it often can influence and has a big influence on their hormones because of their pituitary. Now the pituitary gland sits in a bony vault called the cella tersica, just under the hypothalamus, and it does a lot of signaling. Um, and because it's so small, literally like the size of a pea, very small size and weight, it is often susceptible to injury, whether that's a head injury, a vascular injury, um, sometimes some anomalous injuries. Um, and what happens is in that all of a sudden now you get a hormone signaling to your body, to your thyroid, your adrenals, your gonads, your ovaries, um, your pancreas. You get some signaling and then that's thrown off. Um, it makes sense because again, it's like um, what you hear about traumatic brain experiences and um, uh, football injuries and, and close head injuries now and you're hearing um, all these reports in, in pro sports now of, of the significance of head trauma. It's very real and it's very real in the endocrine system, the hormone system. So we have to appreciate this because often we'll see somebody that goes from a uh, head injury, an accident, an auto accident, an injury, etc., and now there's a response downline that is all of a sudden they have a thyroid problem or they go through major and massive inflammation and fatigue and it's adrenal problem or all of a sudden uh, they're only 35 and they go through an early menopause or andropause. Um, so you have to consider and, and, and we have to always look at the pituitary whether it's hypoproducing, um, in um, some instances hyperproducing, um, and what that may cause. So always looking at the, um, the, 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 uh, the, the root cause and the details here. Um, so that, that, that's important, I want you to understand that. Um, sometimes it, it's uh, it, people that have head injuries, their pituitary looks normal, their hormones are normal, and uh, it's something that we can you know kind of rule out. But it's something you have to consider. Some things I often see too in people is if they have a large pituitary gland and it can then produce excessive volumes of DHEA. Um, DHEA is also an adrenal hormone, but there's a lot of studies that actually show that people with larger pituitaries producing excessive DHEA can have anxiety. Um, hormones we always say are about balance, okay? You don't want them high, you don't want them low. You, they, you need them balanced. So often we'll see even somebody with stress, fatigue, and anxiety when their DHEA is even low. So these are something else that you have to, to see and appreciate. Um, but the pituitary endocrine system is very delicate. 
uh, the take-home message here is it has to be considered if you've ever had a head injury and I mean from anything from an old football high school injury to riding your bike and fell out fell over and had a concussion to what I saw today which was somebody that had a very traumatic brain injury in an auto accident um, doing decent now but here for help because of other hormonal and endocrine problems so I hope this enlightens you to appreciate the noggin, protect the noggin, protect your pituitary, but also understand that your brain has a lot of features downstream um, that uh, need to be considered. This is Dr. Lorenz, Longevity Health Institute. You know, you can find us on the web, Facebook, YouTube, 248-289-6643. Um, um, two locations, soon to have three, um, and uh, serving you well and happy to always help you and uh, give you some insight. So um, have a wonderful evening. This is Dr. Lorenz.